Good day to everyone tuning in. I am Fitzroy Randall, your information officer of the Ministry of Health and Social Development. With me here today is Miss Laurel Freeman, Program Director from the Children and Family Support Services in the Social Development Department and Sergeant Kenra Matthias from the Family and Juvenile Unit in the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. What we'll be discussing here today is mandatory reporting and how it plays a role in keeping our vulnerable population safe. Let us delve right into the matter and ask the pressing question, what is mandatory reporting? Good day, Mr. Randall. Thank you for having us. As it relates to <clears throat> mandatory reporting, we are normally speaking about children and the need to protect children in our community. So that is the basis of when we talk about mandatory reporting, that is what we refer to. So adults within our community are usually vested with the responsibility to ensure the safety and the well-being of our children. So therefore, it is imperative that they recognize the signs of child abuse. And once they recognize those signs, they have a moral and legal responsibility to report any suspicion, any known issue of child abuse or any known case of child abuse to the relevant authorities which are the royal virgin islands police force or the social development department so you would have mentioned all those who have a moral compass to report on um, child abuse and neglect but could you speak to me like specific professions or individuals who are mandatory reporters well, basically, everyone in the community is a mandatory reporter. It doesn't have to be specific to your profession. However, the child abuse protocol, which was adopted by the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, and the DPP's office, outlined specific professions that are considered mandatory reporters and this document was signed in October of 2014 and it lists physicians, physician assistants, coroners, registered nurses, nurse practitioners, dental hygienists, dentists, hospital personnel, mental health professionals, police officers, attorneys at law, psychologists, substance abuse counselors, social workers, daycare workers, foster care workers, principal teachers, counselors, guidance counselors, priests, and clergy. I'll repeat that because we have, um, I think in our community, we sometimes want to deal with issues within the church and do not think that we have a duty to report those issues. So let me just emphasize that the protocol says that priests, clergymen, including Sunday and Sabbath school teachers are mandatory reporters, including also family members, coaches. So it basically covers everyone in the society. Once you live in the territory, you are a mandatory reporter. Okay, and to your point of mandatory reporters um, reporting cases of child abuse and child neglect to the Royal Bir Virgin Islands Police Force, I would like to turn over to Sergeant Matthias and ask, what role does police officers play in reporting incidents of child abuse or neglect? Good morning to everyone. Um, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force investigates all crimes within the territory and is responsible for the enforcement of all laws that are to be enforced within the territory of the British Virgin Islands. The force is governed by a police act, which has several objectives. And these objectives must be carried out by police officers. Section 4.1 of the police act identify these objectives. One, protection of life and property. Two, maintenance, maintaining law and order. The three, the prevention and detection of crime. Four, 
the enforcement of all laws that are required to be enforced. I pointed out these four objectives for a reason. The Children and Young Persons Act is an act which the police and especially the Family and Juvenile Unit has to bear in mind and investigate reports of neglect, child abuse, and other offenses when it comes to children, young persons, and other vulnerable persons. Police officers have a duty to report any form of crime, whether child abuse or any other crime. Okay? In order, this is, this is for police officers to protect the health and safety of a child or children. And they normally come out with these reports, for example, in domestic matters. When police officers respond to a domestic report, once a child is involved, okay, their duty to ensure the safety and welfare of the child. And therefore, they will partner with social development and other groups within the community in order to ensure the safety and welfare of such child or children. And it's their duty to arrest the perpetrator involved in such reports. Well, in the Virgin Islands, right, we have this commun community, uh, this togetherness, you know, where we're always looking out for <coughs> our brothers and sisters. But at the same time, you know, people will always tell you, you must see people business and leave it alone. So what exactly are potential consequences for, so for a mandatory reporter failing to report cases of child abuse or child neglect? Well, there, there haven't been any cases really to say that um, there's one, one being taken before the court. But we as police officers will collect the evidence and put it before the DPP, and the DPP will make the decision. Okay, so... In addition to that, if I can add, though, the Children and Young Persons Act specifically speaks to what some of the legal consequences are, which are if you have been found to, during investigation, be aware of a situation and you fail to report, there's a fine of $6,000 and a term of imprisonment not exceeding three years. So there are consequences attached to not reporting any crime committed against our children in the community. Okay, thank you so much for that. That was enlightening, to say the least. Uh, but there's another question I, I would like to ask, right? I see a child coming to school and, you know, they look sad. There are some scars, some bruises and so forth. What exactly are the steps I should take to report um, my suspicion, suspicion of child abuse? So what are the exact steps I should go to to report this? An individual can report the matter, whether to the police station or directly to the social development. Uh, if they feel um, they themselves uh, don't want to report it, they can report it to someone else and have them report it to the police or to the social development department. And I would advise them once they make a report to follow up to ensure that something, some type of action started. But I know that some of the schools as well have their own in-house mechanisms as to how they do their reporting. So if a teacher becomes aware of a situation, some schools ask that you report it to the guidance counselor and then the guidance counselor goes to the principal uh, or vice versa, the teacher can go directly to the principal. <clears throat> but as Sergeant Matthias said, you have an obligation and a duty and a responsibility to make a report. Don't just assume, yes, I told the principal or yes, I told the guidance counselor and leave it at that because they may not follow through. So you have a responsibility to ensure that police and social development are aware and have 
taken steps to commence an investigation into whatever you reported? Okay, so the Virgin Islands is a very, very small place. We all know this. Yes. I want to report a case of um, that I suspect to be child abuse or child neglect, but I want to protect myself because from retaliation from the person who I reported, what guarantees do you have regarding privacy and confidentiality of reporters? You can always report a report a matter without giving your name, your address, your telephone number. What is important is that the police will investigate um, the person involved, the victim. You are looking for uh, you are looking to ensure that the welfare of the victim is being taken care of. You don't have to give the police your name. You don't have to give the police your number. You don't have to give the police your address. You are just giving them the information to work with. Can I just add to that? Because I know our small community poses challenges. I may not want to give my identity, but the mere fact I call, you may recognize my voice, right? So persons, the, the Children and Young Persons Act, Section 4, offers the person who is making the report legal protection from liability in order to encourage prompt and complete reporting of suspected child abuse and neglect. Any person, official or institution that in good faith makes a report, takes photographs or takes a child into protective custody should be provided with immunity from any civil or criminal liability that might result from any actions. Additionally, the Social Development Department is not permitted to disclose the identity of anyone who makes a report unless that person gives us permission to do so. And in making a report, it is important to include, if you if you know, some persons may not know, they might just say, well, my neighbor, um, I live here, there, East End, West End, and I hear my neighbor, you know, beating his or her child. We just need to know the child's name and the school the child attends. So you may not know the name, but you may not you may know the school and a description because we can't take a report to say um, Jack or Jane Doe is being beaten and we don't have the relevant information, right? So we encourage persons to give at least some type of identifying information that we can start from there and we most times start from the school and go from there. Okay, so how does mandatory reporting or what policy or protocols you guys you guys have in place to prevent um, malicious or false reporting? Because I can have issues with my neighbor and I am a mandatory reporter and I call the um, police force, I call social development and say, my neighbor is beating their child when that may not be the case. What is in place to prevent that from happening? Based on the um, Police Act, those are dramatized. I think there's a section on there that talks about consequences for making a false report. Um, section 89, based on the information I have here. Um, but one of the things we want, we don't want to encourage persons to make false report because then an investigation will ensue. We will call, we will follow up. And persons don't normally like to receive phone calls from social development or police to say, we received a report that your child is not coming to school with adequate lunch or breakfast or your child isn't groomed or your child was reportedly um, physically abused because then that engages the department with the parent in a very adversarial manner at times. So we will not want to encourage person to make false report, but any suspicion or any known case of child abuse, because we have to protect our children in our community. It doesn't have to be your child or um 
someone else's um someone else's child might be in danger and you might be the only person who is aware of what is happening to that child so unless we receive the information and can conduct an investigation it is not beneficial you know for the child or children to be dealing with a situation long term and persons are aware of it like you keep saying mr randall we live in a small community so there are people who know things but are afraid to report so we just want to encourage persons there are several ways that you can report you can do it anonymously you can call me you can call sergeant matthias you can send an email you can call the the tip line because i know police normally have a 1-800 number or something you can use that you can call 311 or 911 whatever you can leave a note right you can leave a message on uh, facebook whatever mechanism is is available to you we implore you to report any suspicion of child abuse within our community okay thank you so much for that uh sergeant matthias right uh how does the police force provide ongoing training and support for their police officers with complying with mandatory reporting laws and also uh scouting or scoping out signs of abuse and neglect when they respond to a situation well, the police force in itself, um, once you go to the, the training school, you have um, like Paul Sue's, like lecturers comes in from the Family and Juvenile Unit. We have Inspector Bob who normally comes in and give them training in domestic violence. How should they, how they will be able to identify Paul Sue's, like involved in domestic disputes and or avoid um, who's actually been involved in domestic violence. You have also on the job training where we have the police training department would have scheduled on the job training at the police station or other government departments where we'll do training in respect of domestic violence matters, we have sexual harassment matters and other family matters. So, but there is nothing in place otherwise than you going out there and as an investigator, being able to identify poor souls who are actually involved are being abused or being neglected. Okay. We are living in a technological society. Most of our children are online. They have social media. They have their online chat room, all of these things. So how has technology impacted the landscape of mandatory reporting, especially in our online forum? Like, how does it relate? How does it impact it? Well, you have Miss um, Miss Freeman earlier spoke about you can use this medium to report matters. But um, as technology develop you find that a lot of offenses have been committed when it comes to young persons and ch children and child children and um sometimes we have to use these medium also to conduct an investigation okay mm -hmm. even if um it has been brought to us by the media, by just being going through the media and we saw this 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 um video of a child, you know, within the territory being neglect or abused, we'll immediately launch an investigation. Okay. What now I would like to know is are there any do you guys have any stories of successful collaboration? between law enforcement and other entities in the Virgin Islands, also the Social Development Department, in part of the mandatory reporting process? All the time. <laughs> All the time. Because we walk along, especially the Family and Juvenile Unit, walk along with the social development on any matter involved, child, a young person, or serious domestic matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to 
mandatory reporting, once it's been reported to the, the, the social development department, they will send a referral to the Family and Juvenile Unit of the Royal Virgin and Police Force, an investigation will be launched. If it would be reported to the police department and it be reported to the Family and Juvenile Unit, a referral will be sent to the Social Development Department and we work together, investigation will be launched. Okay. Before we move on, Mr. Randall, if you would permit me, I'm happy that Sergeant Matthias mentioned domestic violence because that, that is one of the areas we sometimes fail to omit as part of our child abuse uh, campaign or awareness because when children are present in domestic violence situations, they themselves are affected. So if persons are aware as well of any domestic violence um, incident and you know that there are children involved, meaning their children, young children that live in the household, please also report. And just to add another collaboration, remember that I mentioned physicians are mandatory reporters and the age of consent in the Virgin Islands is 16. So when girls go to report to a doctor, a private doctor or a, the public hospital and they are under the age of 16 and they have reported to be whether pregnant uh, or sexually abused, then, well, specifically in pregnancy, that report is made to the Royal Virgin Islands Police and the department because they know that if you are 14, 15, you cannot consent to having sex. So if you are pregnant, then we need to make a report regarding this matter, right? And even if there are situations of sexual abuse and parents choose to take their children to a private facility, then those physicians also report the matter to the department. So we are very um, pleased with the collaboration and the information that we have been putting out over the years to educate the physicians and the private medical facilities that you also have an obligation to make reports of this nature to the relevant authorities. And I must say as well that we have had very good uh, cooperation with the churches as well. We have done a lot of informational and awareness sessions with the, the churches in the community to make them aware that these matters should not be handled in the church, right? You can't pray it away. You cannot say, well, go home and deal with it with whomever you believe in or use your faith, right? In the Virgin Islands, you are mandated to report and we have had instances where that has happened in the past, but I'm happy to say that based on what we have been doing over the years, the churches feel a bit more obligated in their um, duty to report. So we have been receiving reports from that avenue as well. Okay, so we are winding down from what was a very informative and engaging session on mandatory reporting and i appreciate you guys for coming out and educating the public because this is something that everybody needs to know everybody mm -hmm. needs to understand that they are mandatory reporters Correct. and it is our duty to protect our children because they are the next generation of virgin islanders who will continue to build our nation so as we are closing off do you guys have any last words for um the people who will be tuning in well, I just would like to say thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Randall, because this is another way that we can educate persons, whoever may be listening or watching, to let them know. Because persons may not be aware. They might say, well, that's not for me. I'm, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a social worker, police officer. Um, and like you rightfully said earlier, within this small community, persons are very um, guarded in what they do for fear of um, retaliation or 
you know, negative connotation. So I'm happy, very happy to have this opportunity. So I would just like to encourage persons, if you know of a child who is being abused sexually, physically, who goes to school without lunch or breakfast, you know, they're not properly groomed over a period of time, please find it in your heart to make a report so that we can bring help to that child and help to the family. And the numbers that you can call at Social Development, I forgot to mention, are 468-3636-468-3650. And we also have an emergency number, 468-9371. And you can also send an email at socialdevelopment at gov.vg. Thank you. Um, I must say thank you for having us. Um, I know some people still don't have confidence in sometimes the police, police in itself because they have the opinion that when they made a report or when they call, that the police normally give out their information. But um, I want you to have confidence in the police mm. and also have confidence in your society mm. and your children. So... If you see something, still make a call. You don't have to give your name, just give the police the information. If you don't want to give the police the information, you can give the social development or some other organization that you believe or have confidence in that will report the matter to the police. Okay, because you might turn a blind eye to something and then tomorrow it escalates. So mm -hmm. we want you to report each and every child abuse matter. Um, number social from the number at Family and Juvenile is three six eight five six six zero. Can call that number or three six eight five six six three. Our telephone number mobile three six eight nine nine zero four or three six eight nine four zero one thank you thank you so much this was your gis report on mandatory reporting i would like to thank miss laurel freeman and sergeant kenroy Mateus for taking their time um, to explain to us what mandatory reporting is and how we are obligated as citizens as residents of the virgin islands to report cases of child abuse and neglect so remember if you see something say something because we all have a responsibility to protect our children. I am Fitzroy Randall, your information officer in the Ministry of Health and Social Development. Have a blessed day.